It's Thursday, and that means football. Patriots-Jets. Eh, not the most attractive matchup, but by God, I know you want to bet it. And here to help us talk about it will be my good friend and yours, Mr. Mark Zinno. Before we get to Patriots-Jets, however, we have a couple baseball games to talk about. We were 2-1 and one overall on the show yesterday. Your Baltimore Orioles keep slumping. We played against them in our best bet. Stay tuned for today's best bet because it is in that Patriots-Jets game. But Mark, you're mm. looking at a first five bet. We give out a lot of first five bets here on the morning wager. And it is Phillies Mets, a couple of the NL East contenders. Taiwan Walker, he was demoted back to the bullpen for the Phillies. Now he's starting again today. What do yes. we do with this one? Well, yeah, uh, it is an interesting set of circumstances here because I find myself often in this business doing things that I'd rather be awake for a colonoscopy. Um, and one of them is backing Luis Severino to do anything when it comes to pitching. But we're going to do that today um, because Taiwan Walker, uh, not that Taiwan over there, the Taiwan that pitches for the Phillies, yeah, um, he may as well be over there because he stinks. I'm sure there are better, actual better pitchers in Taiwan, the country, than Taiwan Walker. Uh, so Walker has been a dumpster fire, as you mentioned. He's absolutely awful. There's nothing about him that is redeeming at this point in time. Why he's getting a start – and what could be one of the bigger series for the Phillies with a chance, I think, to clinch this thing, right? Um, given where the rest of these teams are, uh, or at least knock the Mets out of it. Anyway, he's on the mound tonight. Severino for the Mets at home this year. A 2.86 ERA. Um, he's 6 and 2 as far as a record is concerned in 15 starts. Opposing hitters batting 231 against him. He's kept the ball in the ballpark, only allowed eight home runs on the year. Um, you know, and, and again, this is a guy right now that the Mets have learned to trust every five days. So last time I trusted Luis Severino, it was 2018. So there is that. But I do like this spot here. The Mets are clearly the more desperate team. They're in the thick of the wild card race. They have home field advantage in a big four game series where they know they've got to get the first game. So if the Mets can't get to Taiwan Walker early, guess what? They're dead in the water. This is their best chance to steal the first game, get a little momentum here. They get to Walker early. I know this number is a little bit juicy here, but I'm willing to back the Mets. Keep the tie in my back pocket for whatever reason, if we're 1-1, 2-2. But the Mets should be able to push at least two or three across against Taiwan Walker here. If they can't, they're probably dead in the water and the Phillies are winning the game outright. So we'll do Mets first five money line here. A little bit of a heftier number for my half of the double. Yeah, just to follow up on something Mark said there about the Phillies and their, you know, obviously the Phillies are going to make the playoffs. Their magic number to make the playoffs is one, so they can clinch a playoff spot with a win tonight. Uh, yes. Their magic number for the division is still four, so they can still get there with the winning series. But Mark says the Mets spoil the party because who would bet on Taiwan Walker? Smash that like button if you're in agreement with Mark there on the Mets in the first five now. Mark lamented the fact that he would be betting on Luis Severino. I will raise him by betting on Patrick Corbin today. It is Patrick Corbin day. Uh, the Nationals go to Wrigley Field. I'm getting a run and a half, Mark, as you might imagine. It should be around minus 135. Didn't work. Well, well, we're, this is going to work, and I'm going to tell you why, okay? Patrick Corbin. Now, the Nationals, they have nothing to play for, right? They're, they're out of it. They stink. Not a good baseball team. However, you know what Patrick Corbin has to play for? Pitch Contract. for, I should say. Yes, his job. If he would like to remain employed in this league, he is going to need a strong finish to the season. And guess what, Zeno? Corbin mm. has not been that bad of late. Five oh. of his last six starts, Famous he's allowed two words. earned runs or less. <laughs> Famous that? last words. Famous last words when it comes to Patrick Corbin. He hasn't been that bad as of late. And then what happens two as soon as you say that? He gets destroyed. Two earned runs. Two earned runs or less. Every start since August 16th, he had a blow up at Pittsburgh. That's okay. We're going to look past that. Look, oh. the Cubs right now, the Cubs, they've really gotten up. They're done. They're not making the playoffs. Last night, Millie Wauke clinched the NL Central pennant, tip of the cap yes. to them. Uh, the Cubs are not catching. They're far enough up. It would take a miracle for them to uh, catch up to the three teams competing for those last two wildcard spots. So they come into this series a demoralized bunch. Very little to play for. I've talked about it on Wager Talk TV, various shows all week long, I feel. The Cubs at home average a full run less per game than what they average on the road. Let's talk about the split. They're fourth on the road in scoring, just 25th at home. So give me the one and a half with Washington here. Uh, Corbin, 
He needs to pitch well to stay employed. I'll bank on him doing it. Javier Assad, the start for the Cubs, he hasn't been knocking them dead. Team's lost his last two starts. The Cubs, oh, by the way, have just two wins in their last seven games after they were so red hot in August. Washington, plus one and a half, is my half of the double play to go along with Mark Zitto laying the half run with the Mets in the first five. I'll put a little more feather in your cap. The Cubs, top 10 in strikeout rate at home this year. So uh, I always enjoy... It's always an extra added plus when you're playing against a team with a high strikeout rate, right? Because chances are they swing and miss like I do in the dating world, but different. (laughs) Let us know in the comments section who you think Mark Zitto should be dating. Let us know in the comments section if you think the Nationals will be a swing and a miss. Uh, (laughs) They will not be a swing and a miss, I think. Let us know your favorite bets in MLB for Thursday. Positive, negative, neutral. You just want to smash that like button, give us a thumbs up. We love the feedback we continue to get here on the Morning Wager. Now, Zitto, uh, what do you have cooking at your page for Thursday before we get in to Patriots Jets? Well, I got a little penne a la vodka. Uh, sometimes I make a little lasagna. Oh, cooking. I mean, okay. What do you mean? It's, <laughs> why do you phrase it that way? What do you have cooking? What am I, Giada De Laurentiis? What are we doing here? Uh, what do I have you up at you the were, site? Were. I wish I you were, quite frankly. <laughs> Listen. Anyway, uh, WT.Buzz slash MZ. Still got a 5% play in college football up for this weekend. Uh, we are going to lock and load an NFL player prop for tonight. Guys, still 75% on NFL player props dating back to last NFL season, to the beginning of last NFL season. So we'll get a player prop up. Also, love one play on the Major League Baseball board tonight. So I'm telling you all this, and I'm going to do it without touting uh, my record the way Brian Power does. And uh, you know, <laughs> I knew that was tough. Tough. Everything else, and you know, just make you roll your eyes and uh, God, BP, shut up. We know you're good at this. So anyway, wt.buzz slash mz. We'll have a baseball play, a game, a play in the uh, in the in the Thursday night game as well, a prop. So wt.buzz slash mz. And don't forget about that five percent first five percent best bet college football play of the year. Two things: one, you literally touted your record about a minute ago. Number two, I've know, got said, two early <laughs> plays for Thursday. I've got two early plays for Thursday. Champions <laughs> League best bet. He's telling BP number- not to cut his record right after I touted my own record. Yes, yes. <laughs> number one in soccer since April. Get that four yes, percent winner early, and we've got a major league baseball. The losing streak ended in MLB last night. Zeno, I had the Guardians win in dramatic fashion. I have a three percent total in major. League. It's twenty nine dollars for my two plays on Thursday, but you got to act quick early, guys, uh, because those will be off the board by twelve forty five Eastern time. Okay, yes, and is. have a hot dog. I'm going to the, I'm going to the baseball game. I'm going to have a rally burger, not a hot Whoa. dog, uh, as I'm at the Twins Guardians so game. Have a rally. Without, Without a, a rally, burger. rally burger. There you go. All right. Um, I also may By have way, a rally your burger. Streak? How's your under streak at, at the progressive field this year? It hasn't been as good because that's become an over park this year. Uh, right. Now, the under's been hitting recently at progressive field, save for yesterday, which the game went to extra innings. But I think the previous five Guardians home games at all stayed under. We shall see. I'm not betting the under today. Full candor. Uh, I, I follow me on Twitter. Follow I mean, me on Joey Twitter at always- Ryan Powers wins for more information there although the the assassin has not been good as of late he hasn't gotten through five innings in like last five starts so yeah it's, it's been a while it's been a while so yeah, follow me on twitter at brian power underscore wins for more details on guardians twins i'll be there say hi if you see me i'll be uh yeah probably in the left field stand Listen, somewhere anyway anybody who's out there no nobody loves being recognized in public more than brian power does if you said hey are you brian power from the morning wager that's what you should say just say that Yes. There, there you go. go. There you go. There you go. That that is how you can identify me at at the corner of Carnegie and Ontario. All right. Uh that's also the way you're probably going to want to watch the Jets and Patriots tonight because uh whoa, no, best, is this an ugly matchup, you know. Jets and Patriots is with a blindfold on or a different channel. Yes. Um this is a horrific spot for both teams. Okay, why? The Jets are playing their third game in 10 days. In soccer, we would call that a fixture pileup. This is football, so we won't say that. But the Patriots are coming off an overtime game on Sunday. Mark, would you like to guess how teams coming off an overtime game on Sunday do when they play on Thursday? Uh, I think you're indicating that this would not not, not go well for said teams. 3-21 and against the spread all time. It's not good. Wow. (laughs) Not good. 
So, yeah, that's a little tidbit, something. So, I don't want to play the side here. Everybody, it seems, likes the under. You and I are going to drill down a little bit further, though, and focus on the first half. Take it away, my good friend. Well, um, whenever, whenever I see a large portion of people on one side of a bet and the numbers don't move the way this has kind of been pasted at 38 and a half of the game, it makes me feel a little bit nervous. You know, like we look around and, you know, BP and I have our own people that we sort of follow and tail and see what they're, you know, playing, what they're putting out. Everybody seems to love the under tonight. And I get why, right? The Jets haven't had 300 yards of offense in either game this year. The Patriots only have 300 yards of offense against Seattle because the game went to overtime. So um, these are two teams that don't necessarily move the ball. Patriots got a ton of injuries on the offensive line. The Jets defense isn't like, you know, uh, firing on all cylinders yet, but still good enough to limit an offense with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback. So all the reasons to take the under here. But I always like to look at the first half when I have an opportunity, especially when the number favors me here. Um, there are 20s out there in the first half. Shop around. Please look, because uh, if you look at the way to talk odd screen, there are 20s available. So go get them. But 19 and a half pretty much is the number across the board. And you have to figure that the Jets have only scored seven points in the first half of their first game. They've only scored seven points in the first half of their second game. The Patriots didn't. Uh, they got 13 points against the Bengals. But again, that a lot of that was the Bengals' turnovers, some fortunate pos field position for the Patriots um, that got them there. I just don't think either one of these teams are going to come out hot. The Patriots like to run the ball. They haven't thrown for more than 150 yards this year. So you're going to see a very, very slow pace. The Jets clearly have scored more in the second half than they have in the first. I could envision a world, BP, where mm. you know this is 10-3 at halftime, and you get into the, you know, 21 to 10 range and a garbage touchdown, whatever it may be, and a two point conversion gets you over something to, you know, or, or 20 to 13 late, something like that. I mean, it just, if it's not going under early, it's not going under late. If this thing goes over 20 in the first half, guess what? It's going to go over for the game. So I don't mind the 19 and a half. The 20 is obviously a better number that gets us 13 7, gets us 10 10, you know, 17 3, even if one team is that far ahead of it. You got plenty more options for a push at 20, but I don't even mind the 19 and a half. First half under tonight between Jets and Pats. Yeah, we were talking before the show. The Patriots' first half team total is set at seven and a half. Seven and a half. So they are not expecting a lot of points from the visitors early in that one. All right. Yep. That is our show best bet under the first half for Patriots Jets. Uh, nothing for me on the college game tonight. I'm going to start rolling out if you go to wt.buzz slash BP, my football plays for the weekend. I'm going to have a 5% play in college. NFL, we swept last week, week two, four and oh, my top two sides are already locked and loaded for Sunday. I'll say this about Sunday, Mark, obviously underdogs have ruled the day. That's good for me. I mean, obviously if the underdogs rule the day, generally I'm doing, I, I like underdogs. Um, I would be tread carefully with some of the bigger, nastier underdogs on Sunday. I think Pete, you're going to hear a lot about trends and how well they've done. Yeah. I think yeah. so. I think, I think teams like the Giants, the Rams, the Broncos, I'm not running necessarily to the window to play any of those three. There will, of course, be some live dogs, and I, I hopefully will be on a few of them. But uh, tread care because the favorites ruled in week one, the underdogs barked in week two. It'll probably be somewhere in the middle on Sunday, I bet. Sure. I would say this much. Uh, this card on Sunday to the NFL, to me, looks a lot like a visit to the strip club because there's a whole lot of teasing going on. And that's really what it boils down to. There are some amazing teaser candidates this week yes. uh, in spots that we absolutely love. We'll divulge more of that tomorrow, but we have to kind of see how uh, the injury report goes in certain cases, i.e. Justin Jefferson in Minnesota, Justin Herbert with the Chargers. You know, I mean, if these guys are playing, these are there are prime teaser candidates across the board. It's just a matter of drilling down the right one for the right reason. We'll go over some of that stuff tomorrow, but I, I genuinely think that uh, – I don't know what this hand signal is. What is? What is I was drilling, that? drilling. I don't know, like I've ever used a drill before. Okay, they're like, well, okay, also, like I, I don't know, of some drilling. sort. Of <laughs> drilling, uh, but nonetheless, uh, we'll get in, get into that more tomorrow. I, I mean, I, I, you know, what is hot route? What is red seven? What is hot route? I mean, that that's what you just did. I don't, I don't know what this means. It was I mean, my. You, I, you, I, don't, you, I thought that's how you drill. I was pulling. Looks like, you know, it, was like, it, was, it looks like it was a gang sign. Like, not in a gang. Bloods and the Crips. They both like me. They both like me. That's the thing. Uh, uh, okay. Anyway, any sort of gang initiation is like a snowball in hell. Okay. It just does not exist. I come from a tough neighborhood. Anyway, that does it for the morning wager. 
here on Thursday. We will be back on Friday college football. To talk about nice, nice Friday night college slate too. We'll, we'll talk about. Uh, we head on over to Mark's page. Head on over to my page. Winners galore. And here is the jingle. Like, comment, subscribe. If you have not done any of those three things, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting? I don't know. Why I am? All right, guys. Have a good day.